and welcome back. This is the Sanctus Nex, and we are back in ESO, Elder Scrolls Online. As we last left off, I finished creating a character and showed you guys character creation. Now, I'm going to use that same character to show you guys the starting zone of Cold Harbor. Let's go see our very first quest marker, the Prophet. So, Lino, you've been through an ordeal. Take a few moments to collect yourself. What's happening? Who are you? Like you, I am a prisoner in this place. Yet so much more. I am the past and the future, both. I am despair and hope. The tapestry we weave is a complex one. You cannot hope to see its pattern in its entirety. Not yet. What do you want from me? You must rescue me, and I, in turn, must rescue you. You must escape from this cell, take up arms, and protect yourself. Then find Lyrus Titanborn. Lyrus Titanborn? Who's that? I don't understand. And he disappears, leaving us hanging. Perfect. You there. We are escaping. Let me open your door. Okay. That's it. Quickly. You must escape before the guards return. Everyone, quickly. quickly. Thanks for letting me out, Already friend. Let's go. Shit. Run. Sprint, 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 sprint. There are weapons in the forge beyond these cells. Okay. I will gladly take up one of those weapons you mentioned. Uh, I'm trying to think of what what weapons I want to go with for this starting area. Um, let's see. <laughs> Ooh, this is new. This has changed. When you came in here last time, in earlier versions, there were just a couple of mindless weapon racks on the ground. Now there's actual stuff laid out. That's a nice little touch. Um, one of the recent additions is they redid Cold Harbor. They changed up how the starting zones operate. Also, the starting zones are optional. So you don't actually have to do them. There is a sword here. <gasps> do we actually get to pick more? Oh my. We don't get to pick. That I like that. I like that touch. You had too much flexibility early on. I I like this. Also, I'm gonna drink up these random things because I want to. I am I am very thirsty. I am drinking all of your stuff. Fear me. Pretty sure if I was like low on mana or health or something, that would give me a tiny little boost back to it. Although recovery in this game is quite high when you're outside of comeback, and this room is new. This was not here last time. Down on the ground! Uh, no! And down you go! Uh, oh, I missed. There we go. Got him! Oh yes, I forgot to mention, there is a, a first-person mode, which operates pretty much exactly as it did in Skyrim and Oblivion. So it works quite well. Let's head on through. Um, it is my personal recommendation if you want the best the best experience, go first person. You want the most effectiveness, go third. Because with third, you can see more of your surroundings. You can zoom out and effectively see a bit behind you. Okay, so we've leveled up. Let's see. Proceed to open your character menu and increase your effectiveness in combat. So when you get into this, first you get to choose a point to put into magicka, health, or stamina. My recommendation for the starting zone is pump it straight into health. Because you'll get more health in the long run. You know, is that true? I think it's true. But we're going to put it into health. That's just a base stat. You put it, it's good for everything. Doesn't matter if you're a healer in the back, P DPS in the middle, or tank up front. Health is very useful, especially in, say, PvP. Because when you go into PvP, there is no threat system. <laughs> They're gonna go after the healers. 
that's pretty much right off the bat. Okay, now we get to see our different skills that we can put skill points in. And you're not bound to just putting them into your specific class. Okay, so we've got Adric, Adric Spear. This is your melee variant of your holy spells. As you can see, the, the target is just within your immediate area. Dawn's Wrath is ranged damage, which is the one I like. I'm gonna get Sunfire, sunfire real quick. This basically lets me throw, like, a, a holy fireball of pew. The range is 28 meters. Then Restoring Light is your healing spells. Further on from that, you can spend points into weapon trees, uh, as we have two-handed, one-hand shield, dual-wield, bow, structure shaft, and restoration. There's one skill tree I wish they had, but they don't. It's using just a one-hander, like we are right now. However, right now, this is giving us experience for one-handed shield, because you can block with that one sword. You can still block. You can block with everything. Dual wield, you can block. The I, th I think dual wield gives you a higher swing rate. Two hand hits harder. Bow gives you range. Shield gives you more block. Destruction staff lets you go pew pew. I think restoration staff. You you get abilities that heal, but I think it also acts like a beam if I remember correctly. You've also got armor you can spin in. You've got light armor which benefits casting. Medium armor which uh, helps with melee and then heavy armor which is damage mitigation. You could use any armor tree with any class with any weapon. You're not limited to a build. All builds can be effective. All of them. Personally, I'm gonna be using ranged spells but at the same time I might be going medium or heavy. And then when someone, oh no, they're a caster, I'll, I'll get up close and start hitting them. No. I'm heavy armored, bitch. <laughs> oh gosh. I'm trying to decide which one which one I want to go with for this demonstration. Um, because I'm also gonna use this character for a demonstration of Old Mary Dominion. I'm going to create an independent character to demonstrate Ebonheart Pact and Daggerfall. I think I'll do either a half an hour or an hour of gameplay of each just to show the zones. I will not be doing the starting islands for each. Those are optional tutorials now. You used to have to play through them. You don't have to anymore. And the you get sent to the the cities now right off the bat and the areas have been restructured to compensate for that. So you're not going to be thrown like, "Oh, I'm level 1. Let's skip the starting zone." You're not going to be thrown to the hounds. The things will be leveled appropriately around there. Also, the XP boost for like the first couple of levels, I think they tweaked it so it gives you a lot more experience to compensate for the tutorial island being optional. And if you did the tutorial island, then you wouldn't see any of those XP boosts because you would have already reached that level. Yeah, I think for this... Um... Hmm. I think I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go dual wield. I'm gonna go medium armor, and then my class is going to be arranged. Yeah, I think that's what I'll go with. Um, another thing, another thing. Let's go back into skills. There is. You can of course put skill points into crafting. Um. Ooh. Experience gain with one hand and shield skill line by 50%. Actually, I think I'll go I'll go sword and board. Yeah, I got I got shield affinity. That's nice. Um, there's another class tree that'll appear here called World Magic. That's where you get um Soul Trap. And it's a uh, it's a decently powerful damage over time spell. You can you can use it as part of your rotation and do great damage. You'll also get skill trees for fighter skilled, mages guild, and another another group called the Undaunted. You get experience with fighter skilled by doing um, uh, anchors and killing demons. You get skill po you get skill um, experience with mages guild by reading lore books. You don't actually have to read through them; you just have to click them, and it'll tell you say lore book found. 
and you'll get a bunch, you'll get some experience. The Undaunted, you get experience with them by doing dungeons. So, yeah, there's a, there is a lot of things you can get experience for in this game and get experience from. Let's go ahead and continue. So here's Lyris Titanborn we were told to go talk to. You've got more meat on your bones than most of these poor bastards, and I see you've armed yourself. Good. I hope you've still got some fight left in you. You're going to need it. Who are you? A fellow prisoner. The name's Lyris. Lyris Titanborn? I was told to find you. What? Who told you to find me? A strange figure appeared in my cell. An old man in rags. The prophet. He spoke to you? What did he say? He said our fates are intertwined. Ha. Huh. That sounds like the prophet, all right. He's a prisoner here, too. It was very dangerous for him to speak to you, even for a moment. You must think you can help me. I can still hear his voice in my head. What does he want me to help you do? Break him out, of course. Believe me, I can use all the help I can get. That blind old man is the only person alive who can help us get back home. Tamriel's a long way from here. I'll help you. Let's go. Reach the Tower of Eyes. Okay. Sounds good. Block. Now there will there will be a lot of NPCs running through here, but you'll also occasionally see players running through here. There is life to this place. Especially there's going to be a lot of life here with new Imperials. As this beta test, we get to try out the Imperial. It's quite nice. We made it. Like right here, there's a player right there. R Ramsey's the second. And you got there's soul stripping. Arwen the cursed, with gr wonderful apostrophe work. You can put a space in your name, but for my character, super no beard needs no spaces. <laughs> there is a title system too. Hey, so let's see. Optional steps. Talk to Lyris. Come. The sentinels are at the top of those towers. We need to find a way up. What are these sentinels? Magical constructs created by Molag Bal to guide his vision in Cold Harbor. The sentinels are connected. If we destroy one, the others will be blinded. With any luck, that will buy us the time we need to free the Prophet. How can we destroy it? I have no idea. Brute force? We'll find a way. We have to. Be ready for anything. I doubt Molag Ball left the Sentinels unguarded. Let's go. Completed. Talk to Lyris. Let's see. Got an enemy here. Let's help him. That red ring means it was about to explode. Guess it didn't. Okay. So let's see. There we go. Um, one thing I should mention, um... Whoa. Ah. There's more than one Sentinel. Nice. Let's help him. Whoa, latency. That was a bit of latency lag right there. And now it's already gone. Ooh! This spell's been reworked. This this fire this sunfire spell I'm using right there used to do a lot of damage, but it also had a very large cast time. Now it actually doesn't do that much damage, but it's also high cast rate. There's something very specific I'm looking for back here. Ha! Ah, here we go! There's chests hidden all around here. They contain useful items. Such as the shield. Which we now have a shield we can properly block. So we've actually got what we were looking for. Shield. I'm going to check back here just to see if there's another chest. I know most of the chest locations have been changed since last time. Yes! Iron Cure is nice! It's not medium, but hey, I'll take it. It's better than my damn shirt I was wearing. <laughs> oh my god, they did something awesome! This chest didn't disappear! That's awesome! Um, one of the things in this game is... There are loot containers all over the place. They usually contain mindless things, such as these crates uh, or some corn mash. Used for cooking. These crates can be looted globally for the account. 
and after a set amount of time they'll reset. So say if you take one character and loot all the items here, you can't immediately take another character and then loot all those items again. That is to prevent someone from essentially farming. Because as it stands there are tons of containers, but you still can't farm. Because that would pretty much ruin any market if there was going to be some for them. Also, as another measure to prevent farming, all of the stuff you get out of the crates cannot be sold for anything real. Maybe get a couple of gold, but you need a lot of them. And a couple of gold ain't gonna do you very much. Shoot him a bit. Used to be that spell would take out my entire mana bar in two shots. It's lasting three, so they did tweak the mana cost a bit. And I've put no no points in the magicka. Usually when I do my builds, I usually focus on having something for melee. I have a, I'll usually pick a skill that references stamina, and then I also have spells to reference magicka, so I effectively get two resource resource pools to work from. So that makes it quite useful to actually keep my momentum going. Plus, if I have, say, heavy armor, I can take a hit, too. Man, I'm going so bored, so I'm not going to get so much so easy. Let's get, um, I think I've found enough chests for now. There's going to be a lot more further up ahead. So let's head up here and take out the Cold Harbor Sentinels we were told to. That beam of light represents it. That there isn't normally beams of lights on quest markers. That's just a an aesthetic feature of this specific thing. Whoa! Oh, I, um, I got set on fire a little bit. That hurt. Okay. Now we didn't know how to destroy it. Let's just smash the damn thing. Ah, they changed it a bit. It used to be when you While click that, you just get, you just fall flat on your ass, and the thing blows up instantly. It's all, fu it was funny at the time. Didn't make sense, but it was funny. That seems a nice little change. This is actually my fifth beta test into all this. <laughs> um, for the three playthroughs of the fr of the factions, I'm gonna do like about. 30 minutes or an hour on for each one. I'm going to be skipping the Cold Harbor segment because that's basically the same content over again. I mean, didn't it take much from fire, that's for sure. Sword did a lot better. What was that? Maple Lightning Staff. Here, I'll show how the uh, Lightning Staff works for a bit. <gasps> a chest. Helps on robe, light armor. Um. One very, very powerful suggestion I can make for you. Say if you're leveling and you put all your XP into one set of skills, and that's what you're focusing on, you're gonna hit a you're gonna hit a soft cap. That's to prevent someone from being too damn strong. Now, uh, my best suggestion to avoid that is have your entire set of armor be what you want it to be, but swap out two of the pieces so you'll have at least one item from the other two armor sets. That'll get you a ton of experience in the other trees and prevent that soft cap from ever happening. Now let's see, the lightning staff does a damage over time and then fires a bolt. However, you can left click to do like a like a weaker bolt that just fires normally. There we go, we're hitting him. Okay, so that's been the, the destruction staff. There's a whole skill tree associated with the destruction staff that actually gives you abilities other than just the uh, auto attack. Because that was just the filler attack. You've got stuff that, like you've actually got a destructive touch. Sort of like a just go up. Palkum. Hi! Face mirror. <laughs> yes, that's my best representation of an attack. Just smear your hand across their face. <laughs> Goodness. There we go. Got our sword and board back out. Okay, so we're needing to reach the prophet's cell.
This door is up here. Now, one one difference I need to point out. R does not put away your weapon. T does not change your viewpoint. Scroll wheel will change your zoom now. Which is... I think that was the same as before. Z is how you put your weapon away. That's a more of a traditional MMO key binding. Also, sprint is no longer on alt. Alt will open the menu. Shift is your shift. Is your, um... The door's warded. We'll never bleh, get in this shift is your sprint now. And it uses up your stamina to do so. Okay, so... Came up here. This door is blocked by a barrier. We can't get through there. So let's talk to Lyris. Damn it. Destroying the Sentinel must have triggered these wards. We'll need to find another way in. Maybe Cadwell can help us. Who's Cadwell? Cadwell is the oldest of the Soul Shriven. After years of torment, Soul Shriven usually go insane and turn feral. But not Cadwell. He was already insane before he left Tamriel. Mad as a box of frogs, but completely harmless. You'll see. How can a madman possibly help us? Cadwell sees things as he wishes them to be. To him, Cold Harbor is a wondrous place. It's his home. And he knows it like the back of his hand. He's usually down by the river. Let's go find him. Let's find this Cadwell. Oh, guys, you'll love Cadwell. Cadwell is one of the best characters in the game. And he really is a character. <laughs> Here he is, it's Cadwell. He's playing a lute and he's got a pot on his head. <laughs> Hello, what's this? Out for a stroll then? Lovely day for it. He's got his he's got a little twisty stash. That's awesome. You must be Cadwell. Sir Cadwell, yes indeed, a pleasure. And fair Lyris, good to see you, my dear. How are you then? We're trying to get inside the Prophet's enclosure. The door's sealed. Oh dear, oh dear. Well, that is inconvenient, isn't it? Tell you what, I happen to know another way in. Much more of a scenic route. Rather a fun little jaunt, actually, full of traps and corpses and nasty beasties filling up the bits in between. How do we get all through that? Rather cautiously, I expect. <laughs> Watch your step, hold your nose, and do mind the traps. The like as not be a fair dose of running and skull bashing as well. So where's the entrance? Follow the river. You'll find the door to the undercroft at the water's end. Once you're inside, stick to the light and you'll find a ladder that will take you right up to the Prophet straight away. Do give him my best. Thanks. Best of luck. Do check in now and again, won't you? Okay, before we go, tell me about yourself, Sir Cadwell. Well, there's not much to tell, is there? It's the same old pish-tosh, gallant knight, epic quests, rescued maidens. <laughs> I came to this land when my head was quite unceremoniously separated from my body. Bad luck, that, but uh, you make the best of things. How long have you been here? Oh, quite a long time. In fact, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if I was the oldest of the soul shriven, of those who didn't go feral, that is. I know every tunnel and path, every nook and cranny. The others look up to me, I suppose. How do you know Lyris? Ah, Lyris. Girls as mad as sheer Gorus and jammies. Heart's in the right place, I suppose. Says she's got to rescue the Prophet to save us all from eternal torment. How an old blind man could do that is quite beyond me. What do you know about the Prophet? An Imperial gentleman. Apparently he was once a powerful mage, but the years haven't been kind. Lyris says he knows of a path back to Tamriel. I rather think that if one existed, I'd have found it by now. How can there... How can he be Imperial? I'm pretty sure we didn't have the Imperials until the Nords traveled south with Talos to claim Cyrodiil's new capital. And then from there, those became the Imperials. And uh, as it stands, there's only eight divines right now. Talos doesn't exist yet. So, pretty sure the Imperials aren't supposed to be around yet. Okay. I haven't actually given it much thought. Uh, anything's possible, I suppose. Truth is, I've been here so long, this place feels like home. But a good uprising now and again is a pleasant diversion, so where's the harm, eh? <laughs> Goodness. Plain old loot in the middle of a damned realm with a pile of bananas next to him. 
Nice fellow. Let's continue on. This is the river he mentioned that should take us on to our prophet that we need to rescue. Let's see, checking around here. So always good to look around and make sure you don't miss any chests. They had they usually contain the alternate weapons and stuff. And I'm, I'm kind of glad they removed the initial choice of being able to go with whatever weapon you wanted. I like it. See, this is this is just a normal loot container. This contains crap. Like wine grapes. Who's from making beverages? <laughs> also, there is a whole sneaking mechanic in the game. And it works. We all sneaky and shit. I don't sneak, though. That's a trap. <laughs> Let's roll past it. You can roll if you double tap directions. Um, also, there are chests hidden here. Like up here, for instance. Just gotta get up here first. There we go. There should be a chest around here somewhere. Um, could have been the other ridge. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and jump back down. I like to put chests in these back areas too. And dive. Aha, here is one. Yes. Iron sword. Ooh, it's got one more damage. I'll take it. I could dual wield now if I wanted to, but I am not. Um, at level 15, I think it was. Yeah, level 15. You can actually get a second set of weapons that are that are toggled between on the little tilde key that is next to the. One, two, three, four, five keys on right above W A S D. There, it's a key. There we go. <laughs> now I'm trying to remember. I think there was one up here. I gotta get up there. I have to. I must. And I couldn't jump. I already give up. <laughs> now that way will take us to the next area, so let's check right back here real quick, because I'm fairly sure there should be a chest back here. Or in the other little nook. Yep, that one got opened. So let's continue on the next. I keep pressing alt for sprint, because I've been playing Skyrim. Ow! Skyrim. And there is no chest back here. Alright. Let's continue on to the next area. There are more prominent chests in the next little bit. Which are quite easy to get to and usually get missed, so... Ah! Ooh. Oh, evil thing. Got it. Woo! We level up! Yay! Let's see. Um, since we've been using spells so far already, I'm gonna put one in magic, huh? really want to go on destruction stuff. Um, one hand and shield, maybe. Um, actually, I think I'll go heavy armor, since we've already got a piece. Spell resist. Also, also, um, where is it, where is it? Here we go. Juggernaut, you can actually get a melee damage buff for using heavy armor. So, you're not entirely out in the cold for if you want to damage with it. Uh, but for now, we're going to get Puncture, so we actually get a, an ability that references stamina. So now we can both use use both of our resources pools for abilities and such, and it's beautiful. Chest! Gimme, gimme, gimme. Nom. Iron Great Sword. Yes, Iron Great Swords are good if you want to hit more than one target, because their very first ability is a cleave of sorts. And up here is a nice place they love to stick chests. Looks like this one got moved. This hill's been reshaped a bit. And this room, this room is different. They have changed the shape. Oh, spikes. Okay, right, so let's get up here on this one. Hopefully, they left the chest up on this one. Mm -hmm. uh, uh. Yep, still here. Just as I remembered. Iron Sabatons, nice. Starting to get some real armor now. Should be another chest on this side too. 
is it over here? No, it is not. During the last beta test in the previous version, there was a chest here. Looks like it might not be there anymore. Well, let's go ahead and continue on with the place. It should be right through here. Oh god, spike trap. I don't want to touch that. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, one thing. Always take a uh, little gander around here. Um, I'm trying to remember. Is it still back here? It looks like it is not here. I remember there being a smooth chest around there. The rounded chests are always the ones with loot. The squarish chests are always a junk container, as we like to put it. Every single one of these containers that don't have the lid open shows that there is something in them. It's a nice little distinction. There's actually an animation for opening the stuff. So, you actually do get some sign of whether or not there's an item in there, even though we're not even opening it. Okay, right. let's select the lyrics. Good news is we made it here in one piece, and the prophet looks unharmed. Now the bad news. It's going to be up to you to keep him safe and get him back to Tamriel. I'm not going with you. What do you mean? Where are you going? I probably should have mentioned this before, but it never seemed like the right time. There's a trick to opening the cell. The only way for a prisoner to leave is for another living soul to take their place. I need to swap places with the Prophet. Don't do this, Illyris. There must be another way. Believe me, I wish there was, but... I don't see anyone else here with a beating heart, do you? If Molagbal isn't stopped, he'll destroy everyone and everything we've ever loved. The Prophet chose you for a reason. Get him to safety. I'll be fine. I'll keep him safe. There are magical locking devices on either side of the cage. You need to deactivate both of them so I can begin the transfer. Once it's done, get moving. The Prophet will know where to go, but he'll need your eyes and your protection. I understand. Good luck. We're all counting on you. <laughs> Gonna hit the locking devices. Turn you off. Okay, that one's off. Get over to the other side. Turn you off. Hey, okay. now let's observe the exchange. I give myself that the prophet might be free. And they have been swapped, and the locking devices have re-engaged. My prophet. Thank the divines you are safe. There is that at least. There has sacrificed everything that we might go free. Her sacrifice must not be in vain. Can we find a way to take her with us? I wish that were possible. But I promise you, once we escape Cold Harbor, we will find a way to rescue her together, Vestige. Vestige? That is the name I have given you. You are but a trace of your former self. A soulless one. An empty vessel. That longs to be filled. It is as the scrolls foretold, but not exactly as I imagined. Why does Lyris call you the Prophet? That is what I've come to be called. My true name is lost even to me. Years of torment have taken their toll. Quickly now, we must make haste to the anchor. Anchor? The anchors are Daedric machines of the darkest magic. Their chains bind our world and pull it towards Cold Harbor. I can use one of these anchors to return us to Tamriel, but you must lead me to it. All right, stay close then. Otherwise, I'll leave your ass behind. Okay, good, he's following. Yeah, we've got a quest objective over here. Should be a doorway around here somewhere. There it is. the anchor mooring. Ooh, they've actually added a tunnel here. Minor change. Let's go in here. Hmm. Oh gosh. Ah! I'm under attack. Skeletal cryo man, sir. 
Let's interrupt this spell and knock his ass down. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. I am the face of the pain. The souls of the damned are my weapons. You will know eons of suffering. Holy shit. That's a lot more badass of fight than last time. In the previous versions, you just walk in, he just appears, rabble some stuff, and then some servant lady appears. And it's all not very dramatic. That was excruciatingly more dramatic. And I think it was a nice change. Whoop, let's get out of the way. You ass on the ground! Don't want to get hit. Ah, we have defeated Child of Bones. Got some gold in the greatsword. What do you do, Prophet? The Dark Angus portal is high above us. I will prepare a spell to lift us to it. But first, you must reattune yourself to Nern in order to regain your physical form. To do this, you will need a Sky Shard. Hey, Sky Shard? A shard of ethereal magic that carries the essence of Nern. Some link them to Lorcan, the missing god of creation. If you collect and absorb its power, it should restore your corporeal form. I will summon one of these shards for you to absorb. I'm ready. Shard of Aetherius, fall upon us now and anoint us with your blessing. There, quickly, collect ah. the sky shard. Yes, one of the things you should know, all Sky Shards are marked by a pillar of light to help you find them. These are the collectible of the world, and every three you get, you are awarded a skill point. So they actually do have direct value at that point. Great Akatosh, Dragon God of Time, your children are lost in the fog between worlds. They cry out for mercy. Hear my voice, Akatosh. I require your strength. Let the way be opened. Let these wandering souls return home. Let the will of Molog Val be denied. Hurry! We must go now! Nothing was really happening up until he mentioned, Let the will of Molog Val be denied. Okay, okay. It's just we're going to spite him. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll let you use my music. This isn't magic. No, it's music. <laughs> Goodness. We have completed Cold Harbor. I'll see you guys next time.